Hello everyone and welcome to another 3D Buzz training video. In this video, Zach is going to continue progress on the AT-AT-like vehicle type style creature thingamajig that will be in, up inside of the yes, S-Stuff and Unreal 3. Go. Yes. Now, uh, for the couple of minutes that we've had this file open before we actually started recording, Jason asked me a very important question. He asked if I had been drinking while I was modeling the last time. The reason is... Almost nothing is lined up here. Oh, okay, that's true. Almost nothing is lined up here. <laughs> this is kind of way out of scale in a, in a really wacky sort of way. And, and you know how they say, don't drink and drive. Yeah, don't, you don't should, drink and model. Don't drink and model. Yeah, don't drink and model. So I'm going to take just a few minutes and try to put some stuff back in some semblance of order. Let me hit F3 here so I'm just looking at wireframes because that'll just be easier for me. I'm going to, let's see, are these lined up with... What are he's going to start aligning everything in X, as simple as that. Now, while he's doing that, I'm going to talk for just a minute. Oh, God. I'm, for those I'm sorry, you, everyone. You have my apologies. In for advance. those of you that may not have gone over to 3D Buzz today, let me go ahead and take just a second and talk about this new contest that we're launching. Now, I know that Epic Games has the Make Something Unreal million dollar contest, which is absolutely awesome. Many different categories, uh, some of those taking a bit longer than others to get around to, but. We here at 3D Buzz are also initiating another contest to run parallel, with the exception of this contest. If all goes well, we're hoping to hold once a month. So it'll be a monthly thing. Now, what is this contest all about? I mean, it's contest, 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 so it seems like. This one is the old school level design contest, as I am calling it. It's something that I really miss. Is that the official name? Yes, it is. Okay. I've been using it now for the last week as we've been slowly putting this together right. here around the, the office. It's enough it was the official name. Yet. So the bottom line is this. The old days, Unreal, Unreal Tournament, all of the mods, the levels that came out of those days were just fantastic. The community involvement was strong. Everybody had such a good time playing everybody else's maps. You know, one of the things I hate to read these days is when people come online and they say, oh, Unreal Tournament 3 sucks, you know, or Game XYZ. It doesn't matter. <laughs> You've got the engine. The good old days, it wasn't so much about the game. It was about all of the different levels that were coming out of all of these different artists. And then us jumping in and having a blast kicking each other's butts. And those days are all but gone. And I, I really miss them. You know, I miss my Friday night frag fests. Those were really good. Nothing like fragging someone repeatedly with the uh, translocator. But anyways. <laughs> and Logan. Yeah, I know. Boy, oh, boy. So we're doing a, an old school level design contest. And we've made the prizes very much worth joining. Now, it's called old school for the following reason. You are not allowed to use any external assets. No external textures. No external static meshes, no external characters, nothing. Okay, Everything that you do must be already included with the game, meaning I am going to be testing these maps on a stock UT3 install, if you will, so a basic computer that has not had any of the development work that we've done on it. Just install UT3, and then well, if your game loads or map loads, then all is good. So that's the idea. So it's called old school because in the old days, it wasn't so much about creating your own custom models and all because we didn't have static meshes all the way back in the Unreal days. So uh, let's go old school so we can see if we can get more people involved in the contest. Now, for the second and third place winners, we've got the following available. We're going to have... Yep, go ahead. I just want to throw something in here yeah. like, pertaining to the modeling bit. Yeah. I've taken the upper shoulder and I've scaled it down a little bit. I made it way too bulky before. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, continue. Sorry about that. So second and third place winners are going to receive the following. A PlayStation 3 or they could opt for $500 courtesy of Epic Games. We've also got a signed copy of Unreal Tournament 3 by all of the developers at Epic Games, at least all the developers that Ann can get the <laughs> game around to. So it depends on who's at work that particular day, but it should be quite a few very valuable signatures. Let's see, what else do we have going on for second and third place winners? Logan and Terry are going to critique your maps in video format. Now, Logan and Terry are avid Unreal game players, and they're just basically going to give you their thoughts on what they did or did not like. I mean, at this point, you've already beat out 
everyone else, with the exception of the first place winner. So there's nothing wrong with receiving some sort of visual feedback in regards to what they did and did not like, what kept you from perhaps getting first place. Now, is there anything else that they're getting? Because there's a lot of things we're giving. I think that's the bulk of the Well, stuff. for second and third place, it's, it's PS3, it's a copy of UT3. With and the signatures. For the, with the signatures. And the, and the video review. And the video review. Now, first place winner gets the following. $1,000. Okay, so it's $1,000, man. They get a PS3 or $500. So now it could have just gone up to a $1,500. Okay, so let's see. What else do they get? They get, um, I guess I could have had something printed off to read this off for them, but, or read it off from, but they also get a, the biggest thing in my opinion is a video review from Cliff Blazinski at Epic Games. That's huge. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that to me, that, that means more than a thousand dollars. This is an opportunity for you to get your work in front of Cliff Blazinski at Epic Games to, so that he can see what you've done and to critique what you've done. I mean, if you knock his socks off, you never know. He may want to talk to you. I yeah. mean, because he's going to be staring at your work for up to 30 minutes. Well, how many of the people who work at Epic started off as game modders themselves? Many of the employees at Epic Games started out by simply creating their own mods, and they got noticed. So some very interesting prizes, and it's – a very easy contest. The whole idea is just go in, make a level that's a lot of fun to play. Just think about it, though. It's back to architectural design and gameplay. It's not so much, you know, who can create the coolest static meshes and textures and all. So anyways, that is the contest that we have announced today, but we haven't officially kicked off. But we are saying this so that those of you on 3D Buzz and those of you watching this video can go ahead and get a head start. We will release the official official specs to this contest sometime later this week. So yeah, uh, I'm really excited about it. I, had, I am. I think it's a fantastic contest. We had to make sure to put a stipulation in there that said I couldn't join in. And Terry couldn't join in. I wanted Terry to. wanted to join in. Yeah. Well, of course. Okay, let's see here. Uh, back to what I was doing. What have I done in the meantime while you've been talking? Well, I grabbed all the different pieces of the legs, systematically grouped them, and aligned them in X so that we weren't in all these different dimensions okay uh then i took the upper part of the shoulder because it was way oversized and not only did i scale it down i grabbed these two uh areas in here with the screws all the vertices and i pulled those in a little bit okay and then grabbed all the vertices at the bottom and aligned them to this box that i've created so that they're all, all nice and centered up i grabbed the funny little slot pieces here and i mirrored those upwards okay that's really everything i've achieved so far but this is already starting to come together as you can see uh, let's see. Jump, grab this. Uh, bear with me, guys. I I've been staring at this material too long, and I'm going to change it. Yeah. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, maybe desaturate it a little bit. Darken it up some so we can see the grooves, maybe. Yeah, I, I just I got to get something different in there, man. I'm just I've been looking at the same thing for too long now. So we'll go with pale blue for now. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know. It, just, it helps me sometimes when I'm working, you know, to – it makes the model feel fresh again, like it's a new thing. Okay. You're about to make fun of me, aren't you? No, I'm not. Okay, so the next thing. And uh, <laughs> Buzz is frantically pointing out what I should be working on, and I was, it's so funny because he has this, this thing, guys, and you don't know this because, you know, you guys don't hang out around 3D Buzz. He has this awesome knack for telling me to do something that I'm on my way to do. And he has this awesome act of quickly coming in there saying, yeah, that, that's I was what I was about that. to do. Heck yeah. And anybody who's ever had a job knows how to uh, how to do that really well. All right, so we're going to pull these vertices up just a little so go bit. Go ahead and tell them what you're going to do. Okay, well, I... If, if, All right, too slow. He's going to put some vents in there. So basically... They're not vents. They can't see you they're pointing so at the They're not vents. They're not vents. Okay, right here. Look, okay, that's what we're building, but we're going to build a different one because apparently when they shot this movie, they had like six or seven <laughs> different Adat Walker models, and uh, I don't want to build that one because I can't find one good picture of that. Okay. Because to, to me, that's not a very good picture. Sure. It's a little bit contrasty. It's too much in shadow. But, if, hang on, let me flip back through all of my... Exp uh, there you go. So here's a shot of the Adat Walker exploding, which is great. And I think this is a different model. But anyways, down here, it's these two little funny, cute... Notice how they look like vents, guys. I don't think they're vents. Okay. 
Now, you yourself at one point said that that leg piece, the one that's, uh, like Vince that's purple-like, I don't think might s- possibly slide in and out. It might. I mean, and if it does, I could see a reason to have Vince there. Okay. All right, fine. You know, okay, so they're vents, all right? They're freaking vents. Are you happy now? Yeah, I feel a little bit better anyway. All right, all right, fine. Then we're making vents. So here are the vents that we are making. I'm going to draw out a box first off because we need kind of a, a housing plate for these because vents. All vents begin with a box. That's right. Well, you've, you've built the occasional Pretty much. vent. <laughs> yep. All right, so do, 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 and we'll bring this over. So let's see, plate, pluggy, say right about there. Great. Now. A uh, couple of things here. Um, let's convert this over to an editable poly poly. And let's hit the four key, hit F3, grab this little inside poly and destroy it. Now let's hit two. I want this guy. Can I even loop this? Of course not. That'd be way too convenient. But I can grab uh, all of these guys. Oop. Hello. It's great trying to select things with these gigantic pixels. Uh, let's see here. Um, F3, so I can kind of make things out a little better. And we'll hit Z so we can frame up on things. You notice I always have something to gripe about. I mean, if it's not the mouse wheel, it's the size of the pixels. Oh, no. And... Not only have I noticed, our <laughs> viewers have noticed. <laughs> yes. But we know that's just your style, so it's all good. That was so uncalled for, man. That, that, just, that wasn't cool. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Next thing. Dun, 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 dun. Let's um, shift drag a copy of this guy. Yeah, I don't care. Call him what you will. We're going to have so many boxes by the time this thing is done. All right, let's pull this version out a little bit. I'll jump into vertices and we'll tug. Oh, ooh, we must have instanced. Looks that way. Fantastic. Let's get out of here and just click on the whole make unique button. So that's no longer a problem. Maya could use a make unique button. I keep saying stuff like this, hoping that maybe, just maybe, there's like somebody from Autodesk who's actually watching these and making a list of all these things that I, well, okay, we know this is not happening. <laughs> yes. We know. Just keep talking. That's mighty funny. We know this is not happening. But wouldn't it be cool if it was? You know, I can dream, can't I? And another instance, just in case. Well, that's okay. I don't mind. I that. just said just in case. Just, I don't mind that one being an instance, but the the first one can't be an instance. Now, you wanted these to be vents. I don't care what they are. Now, let's make know? them vents, man. You, you want vents? I don't you're... care if they're buttons on the side of the leg that need to be pushed by a team of men. You know, it <laughs> that'd be cool too. Actually, doesn't matter. They're like ejector buttons. <laughs> they they like fire the foot off. <laughs> Plunk. Okay, no, no, they make the pew pew noises. Oh, just I like on the you. electronic toy. I got gotcha. you. Well. <laughs> Actually, if that's the case, if we're just going to cheat and make something something that kind of is, you know, button-like or, or whatever, we could grab both these guys. Uh, let's see here. Set this over to individual pivot points. Actually, I'm going to have to do that again with the scale tool, but that's fine. I don't mind. Uh, we could scale them down like so, and then we're going to have to arrange them a little bit, which is okay, too. Let's slide them both over, kind of get them centered up. Uh, we could scale them both down a little bit. And most importantly, we can move them out a little bit. Now, I mean, that's kind of a quick representation of what you got that's there. That's fine. I mean, I might just leave it like that. Okay. If we're cheating. Now, those could be vents. I mean, we don't know. This is a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Vents might look a little different. Hey, if they've got screws, they've got vents. I'm telling you. I just want to see the screwdriver that puts those in. I really <laughs> do, man. Big plastic the handle. Imperial <laughs> screwdriver. <laughs> okay, great. Take an Imperial number two, please. <laughs> Thank you. Now that we've said that, um, I'm going to taper in these pieces up here and try not to even think about the Imperial <laughs> number two. <laughs> wow. Did, did you pull them in far enough, you think, or is that what you wanted? Okay, now I see. It's just these guys down here, so they weren't yeah. sticking through. Were you looking for something else to gripe about? I almost Pretty couldn't much. tell there. <laughs> That's kind of what I figured, which is fine and all. All right, what if, what's going on here? Um, did I? Oh, there we go. F2, that'll help. Uh, let's grab this face, and I'm going to extrude it back in. And we'll, we'll get to all of this stuff a little bit later. I'm just, I'm just kind of getting this piece kind of out of our way and separating it. Now, what's next? Well, we've got the funny little piston thingies. Mm-hmm. 
in here. I know I'm kind of moving around in all sorts of different directions, but great, that's how I model. So uh, let's see here. Let's jump over here to the side view. I'm going to hit the two key. We're going to grab what? What are you thinking? I was just, when he was rotating, I just got this just a a momentary flash. A chill down your spine, apparently. Yeah, that suddenly just looked like the shin and all looked skinny. I don't know, not not that way. Just narrow. Maybe not. I just, something just doesn't. Did you did you do the measure trick? Can we have a, you... a raise of hands as to who thinks you're wrong? Um, <laughs> no, skinny, a little skinny, like from side no, to side they, here. They, maybe that's about right. You can do the measure trick. Um, I can show them the measure trick. Show them the measure. Well, trick. the measure trick actually, you know, if you're doing it in drawing class, it requires a pencil or a stick or something. But if you don't have a pencil or a stick handy and you have your computer monitor, you just use your fingers. Uh, what I what I will do is, especially if I'm measuring proportion, is I'll pick two landmarks. Now, in this case, we could say the bottom of this piece. And the top of this piece. And then you put the... Now, I'm actually doing this. And you can't see that. So you're going to bear with me. I'm putting the topmost surface of my thumb against this piece right here. Right against those pixels. And then the bottommost surface of my index finger against these pixels. So I'm, I'm making like a pinching sort of shape with my index and my thumb. You know, like the AOK symbol? Mm-hmm. Now, with that, my fingers now have the exact distance from here to here. Now, I can use that as a proportion reference. Like maybe measure from this pixel down to however far this is supposed to be. And by that, we can find out that this shoulder piece is a little bit longer than the distance from here down to just beyond the knee. So it goes, it goes about from here to here. Okay. Now you can use that as a way to measure all kinds of different references. Like, you know, people have told you if you're drawing a human being, the body is supposed to be like eight heads tall or some random number like that. Mm -hmm. I I always find you get different numbers depending on who you're talking to, but you could say, maybe take the, the width of the leg here. So you put your fingers on either side of the leg and then you could say, maybe start at the top of the knee and go one, two, uh, two and three quarters. And that's how tall the leg is. So you've got all these different proportion measures. Sure. Then once you have an idea of this, you can come back over into 3ds max, come over to helper and grab like the tape, which is just your basic tape measure. And then you can kind of do the same thing. So you could say, this is uh, boom, 48.863 units uh, wide. And then measure from here up. We should get about two and a half, two and three quarters times that, which is, what? I can't do the math on that. That's something like uh, 125. There's a calculator button on the 130. I refuse. I refuse. So somewhere around 130. We have it 148. So we're a little bit off. Yeah, it's a little tall. That's what it looked like. I don't think so. Okay. But I'm just... How about also it, measuring from the top of the shoulder But it, it, very, it very well could be. Um, because It's so tall, it makes it look narrow did to me. this. So, boom. And that was 103. 103 and then uh, we pull this down. And at 103, we should be beyond the knee and we're not. So we, yeah. we need to pull the whole thing down a little bit. Which is no big deal. In no, fact, it's no big deal. I'd do it just... in the other direction. I actually pull everything else up. Uh, so you could grab, let's get out of the tape because we don't need that anymore. We're done with it. Grab Why all would you this. pull everything else up? Because I've got an, an elevation established up here. Okay. Remember, we don't really have a ground plane. We were kind of sure. making that up based off rotating things. But this is this actually kind of works. If we hit F3, we've got kind of something to build off of here. Now, okay. That could be moved up a little bit. Let's see. We'll do a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Let's get the move tool and maybe slide this guy up a little bit. And then... To thin everything out. Now, it's funny. Now we're ending up with a leg that's actually shorter than the image plane. You see that? That's weird to me. Do you see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying, but it it just looks stretched really long. And that's without measuring. And then... Man, you measured it, and lo and behold, it, it actually was kind of long. All right, so I'm, I'm just saying, visually, it looked a little long to me. All right, so that goes into 138 on this measure, so... Um, you, it, yeah, they're up. So... You're looking for... I'm looking for 138. Well, that's because that's you're measuring differently from there to... No, up, 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 103-ish. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, 101-ish, which is close enough. And from there down. It's about 101-ish. Yeah, it's better. It's better than the proportion that I was getting um, earlier. So yeah, we can go with that. Even though, I mean, in this case, we basically have to say the image plane was wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, we've already kind of established that a few times. 
be cool. All right, and there's a couple of other things that I noticed we should probably change as well, like this guy. Let's get out of the tape. We don't need that anymore. Um, this whole thing probably needs to slide over just a little bit. Not too much, but enough that he's no longer sticking through there, and he kind of is. Let's kill his height just a little bit. Okay, that should be a little better. Okay, so now let's see. The next thing would be to grab this guy. We've got to clean some stuff up. We've got the little piston guys that go in the center of the leg. That would be here and here. So let's go ahead and take those out. Let's convert everything over to uh, editable poly. Hit the two key and grab edges. Now I'm going to do a little bit of chamfering here, and we don't need that much. In fact, let's go over to perspective so I can really see how much these are getting chamfered. About 0.3-ish. That'll work. Okay, now let's go in the other direction. So we'll grab edges this way. Now I'm going to connect these. Uh, let's do a second segment. Let's increase our pinch to push these out toward the edges, because what we have here, if I can take, find another picture, that's not bad, but here you go. We just got these grooves into which we need to put the little pistons and these little funny slidey blocks. Mm -hmm. So, let's see here, maybe, oops, wrong one. Uh, let's adjust our pinch just a little more, maybe something about like that, click OK, and we'll chamfer that, and now we'll increase the chamfer, and this is going to be the basically the overall width of those channels. So say something about like this. I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to hit apply and we'll chamfer again, but it'll just be like a tiny, almost imperceptible amount. Now after we do that, we can hit OK, jump over to polygons. We can grab these two polygons and we can just push these inward. Now if you see any problems at this point, it's all due to your smoothing groups. Uh, so no worries there. We can just grab the entire element and auto smooth it. In fact, auto smooth might be a little much. We could probably just could remove all smoothing groups and then it'll be just fine. And hit F4 and that solves that problem. Okay. Now let's go ahead and put our little piston things in there before we worry about chamfering in case we need to make any edits to the shape or anything like that. So this is very, very simple. Create a cylinder. You suddenly got really quiet over there. No, I'm I always you, get scared when you get quiet. Letting you do your thing. I'm just, I'm just saying. Always. When you get quiet, fear. That's what it is. Fear. All right. Now, we want this to line up. We need a little bit of gap room, maybe a little more than that. So let's pull down the radius a little bit. Of course, we've got to fit this actually <clears throat> Excuse me, into the leg. So slide this in. it out just a little bit and maybe it needs to be a little bit thinner than that yeah it's looking pretty good I think maybe pull it forward just a little bit more let me take a look from the side it'd be a little easier to see that's pretty close I just kind of wiggle it a couple times so it looks about even okay so let's go with that let's shift drag out a copy I was thinking about like Sliding out, like if you go to a front. Oh, view, like, okay. I'm sorry. I thought forward toward the front of the of the creature here. You mean out yeah, this way? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Just, just a little. Yeah, I gotcha. All right. Now we need the little squarish, blocky thingies that actually slide up and down this. So what I'm going to do for now is let's make a cube. Use a chamfer box. Nah, well, I thought about it, but I'm actually not going to because it's going to create a few more faces than I need. That's true. So I'll just chamfer out what I need. Um, so let's start off with a, a cube, just because that'll give me a nice uh, rounded dimension that stays uh, even in all directions, of course. Now, it probably won't stay that way, unfortunately. So uh, let's see. Let's increase the length until we get something that fits in here pretty nice. In fact, probably be a good idea for me to go ahead and just align all this stuff. Yeah, that's fine. Do what you got to do. Now, um, width, I'd like these to match. So if we set this one to, say, 8, and there's a little bit of gapage there, but I'm generally okay with that. Uh, we could set width also to 8. And then height, we'll just set to whatever works. 
that gives us a little bit of room to slide this stuff up and down. So here we could slide this all the way down, you know, until it would come in contact with the knee and we'd still have plenty of room. So that's a pretty good length, I think. Now let's convert this over to an editable poly. Let's hit four to go over to faces. And there's some faces here we don't really need and we're hanging out a little bit, but we'll deal with that in just a moment. Uh, let's hit F3 and we don't need this face. We don't need this face. So we can go ahead and remove those. Now over here in edge land, we can take this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge. We can chamfer all these at once. That's not bad, but a little bit less would probably look sharper. Click OK, hit F3, and there we go. Now if we want to leave these aligned, we'll, we'll want to move uh, both the box and the cylinder all at the same time. Um, are we having a... there we go. Are we going to have problems, soldier? So fit that just inside, maybe like mm -hmm. so. And then we can take this guy and just shift drag him over, and he can be an instance. That doesn't bother me at all. But let's go ahead and align him over to this guy, and that looks okay. And then well, he's already got a little bit of a different elevation. Just give it a slightly different one, like so. Let's grab everybody, hit the M key, apply, and close. And there we go. Cool. Now that back wall looks a little deep. Functionally, it seems like it would have to be. Uh, though, you know, you look at the pictures and it doesn't look like it's that deep at all. Almost mm -hmm. like that's not even a real full cylinder. It's like right. half a cylinder. This is just kind of sliding along it. Almost looks like the cylinders are sticking out a little bit. Oh, wow, yeah. Like the look whole at, thing sticks Yeah, out. here's... Check this out. I didn't even notice this. Look how much... Yeah, how much gap there is right there. That's out from that. Yeah, I just saw that. Yeah, like, right about the time you started going, oh, my God. <laughs> Oh so, my God, you scared it out. OMG. Right <laughs> oh, time, don't even. Right about the time you OMG'd. All right, and this video will not be completed because I'm about to <laughs> throw you out the window. Uh, awesome. All right, well, here's how I would probably deal with that. I'd slide everything this way um, to get the mm -hmm. appropriate amount of thickness, at least in that dimension, and not worry about the rest until we got done with that. Now, this guy and this guy are going to be the two culprits that will actually change. So let's start with this one. Now, this is an editable poly. He wasn't before, but he is now. Um, we'll get all of this stuff. We can just slide this back over. That's pretty easy. And the other piece shouldn't be any harder. So maybe give it something like that. Let's uh, get out of editable poly mode. Grab you. Also, jump over to vertices. Select this guy. Is that everyone? I think so. And then... Ooh, must have left someone behind. If I was all efficient, I'd do that like in a front or a, a rear view. Good thing I'm not all efficient and stuff. Okay, so there we go. And so that solves that problem. Now we just need to grab you and you. Oh, come on, you. There we go. And we're going to slide all these out. Not too much. Yeah. There's something about like so. Now you can take and uh, inset the uh, underside of that and make some well, you could dark area back also, up there. Also, um, I'm going to pull that out. Yeah, so. pull these back out because these are a little deep now. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's awesome to model with somebody hovering over you. <laughs> oh, my being like a backseat modeler. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that far. I was just going to say it for you. Um, I'm not even going to worry about an indention up here. You could, but I don't... You're not going to worry mm. about insetting and pushing it up or anything? Um, okay, no. that's fine. I'm not sure what you mean. You mean like the whole plate? Like one whole thing? Because if you want individual pieces, I, no. I really wouldn't worry about that. No. Do you mean like... Like if you make sure that we're talking the yeah. same language here. Just grab all that and inset yeah, it. Yeah, if you inset it some and then uh, extrude it and push it back up, it yeah, just looks technically like it does that. Yeah. Doesn't it? Okay, okay. I just hadn't seen that yet. Mr. Yeah, Mr. that's how, how nice. No, it's almost dead on. And okay, and then I'll just be quiet. Now. <laughs> I'd go negative. Oh, wow. A little bit further. Wow, this is where it starts to get really interesting. Okay, cool. I'm about to OMG. This is great. Uh, <laughs> don't even. 
I'll be quiet then. Fine. All right. So uh, let's see. I think this is starting to look pretty good. Um, what's next, though? Let's see. We got all I'd take your I'd take your boxes, your pistons, mm -hmm. push them in just a little. I know they're, they'll then be offset, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Which, in what? The, push in them back so into the legs oh, okay. in the Z-axis. Not, not even those. Not even those. Just, just these? Why? Because they just you still got the other cylinder selected. Undo. All right. All right. Well, it seems like you'd almost want that selected, but... Because they're... they're, they're is that better? Because that's about as far as I can go. Actually, We're right I guess you're going to have to do both. They're just out a little bit too far. Oh, okay. You're all picky and stuff. I, I like the bottom. Because I, I, they look like they were sitting down in grooves. Yours are sticking out. See, but it feels like they're, they're sticking a little bit. out. Okay, they are a little bit. That's good. All right. That'll work. Okay. Hey, what do you know? Oh. Most of a leg in place. Wow. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to clone this guy. And then let's align him over to this fellow, except in the... What's it? In Z? There we go. Wow, that didn't do at all what I wanted it to. <laughs> okay, center to center will work, though. Now, um, let's see. Boom. That's got a funny little rotation to it. So let's see. I'm gonna thicken him up a little bit too. So let's just over to one. Okay. Get out of here. Give me a litter. Of, ooh, nice. Boom. Effect pivot only. Center to object. Thank you. Give him some sort of interesting rotation. Let's take a look. We'll see how. The, I mean, maybe a little bit. Now his bigger. is rounded. Do you have a rounded one? Or no, mine's not really rounded. Because I didn't want to make a rounded one, but I guess I will. I was trying to cheat. Ah, trying to, you didn't think I was going to catch that, did you? I just wanted to use a simple piece and be done with it. All right. Uh, let's see here. I don't want to build it this way. I'd be all picky. If i got to rebuild it, I'll build it however I want to, I suppose. Uh, let's build. <laughs> Rectangle. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Except make sure they ain't crossing. Mm -hmm. Didn't you make one of those on the other one? Or am I just... I bet it was an indention. Uh, so I can't really use it for much. Gotcha. I mean, I suppose I could dupe out the... Um, no, it's all good, because that one, you're only a few seconds away from being done. Yeah, I mean, there's there's ways that you could use it, sure. But nothing I'd actually want to do. And it looks like we've got a little bit of crossover there. So I'll just pull those back until that disappears. Also, you might want the width to be a little thicker anyway, so... Yeah, looking good. Better? Mm-hmm. We've got kind of an uh, interesting channel that you can just kind of make out right in here that sits back behind this plate. We could take that on. Yeah. It also looks like this plate and probably also, therefore, this piece could both be pulled out just a little bit. Because if you take a look here, there's a little bit of Yeah, a, lip sticking out. Yeah, kind of hanging out just a little bit, so we'll do that. Now, to create this channel, here's what I would do. Uh, let's see, let me turn on snapping for just a moment. And uh, what are we snapping to? Uh, let's switch that up to pivot. And we'll turn off snapping while we... Okay, fine. Let's adjust the radius manually. I just want something that fits within that circle. Whoops, we only need one. <laughs> oh, you guys missed that. That was great. Uh, yeah, it might not have even caught it all. Okay, so now um, let's pull this guy over here, and uh, we're going to go to, uh, well, there's all sorts of ways to do what I'm about to do, but let's just create a line and switch off start new shape. 
I'll create a vertex right about here. Hold down shift and create a vertex uh, straight down beneath it. And uh, let's go over to editable spline, grab vertices. I'll grab both these vertices. Let's convert them over to beige. Excuse me, beige. Mm. And um, yeah, go ahead and click on this guy right here. Yeah. Pull that out real quick. Oops, wrong guy. Yeah, he's in the way. Yeah, you gotta love that. Okay, so now all we're really doing is just kind of shaping out this uh, this groove, kind of the line that will define this groove anyway. And I'm going to kick up my interpolation steps. Now this is going to kick them up for the circle too, but that's nah, okay. That's just cost of doing business. You want it to look fairly even on both sides. That's not too bad. Especially considering it's kind of a hidden thing. So, let's see, or maybe just a little bit further out. Not too much more, but... Or... Okay, hang on. I'd grab the top one. I would... I'm going to slide these oh, okay. out a little bit. In fact, let's see if we can do both at the same time. So, something about like so, and then we'll pull these back in just a little bit. I, know, I, I like the, a little bit more curvature. I like the little bit more curvature. But it doesn't have that kind of curvature. See, it kind of... I don't, I don't see it really following... Flip through some other pictures. I guess we could go with it. Somewhere in there is fine. Okay. And let's do an outline. Uh, that'll work. Now let's switch over to vertices. And we'll just fill it these down. And there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's grab this whole thing. And we can drop a bevel on it. And let's take a look. Let's see what this looks like. The coolest shape in history. Yeah, part of the problem yeah, is just they're not lined up. Lines. So no worries. Bingo. <laughs> Has to be one of them. Kind of what I always do. Just click them on, click them off sooner or later. All right. So I think that's going to cut that out pretty well for us. It's a little thick. Um, I mean, that's going to be a little bit of a pain, so I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, just slide it into place, change its color, and it's probably going to work. Um, let's see. On that note, let's drag it, hit S, and pop it. That. That's close enough to get us started. Let's hit S again to turn that off, and then we'll slide this all back in. Um, you know, you could probably grab, say, this polygon, give it just a little more depth, not too much more. Now, um, let's see, next thing, I would probably... Okay, there's that. Let's grab link. I want to link the little piece here if it'll let me. Yeah. There it goes. There you got it now. I'm going to get a nice edge on view so it's real easy to see, so I don't have to worry about pick lists or anything like that. Okay, so now if I grab this guy and rotate him, he comes along, so we just need something about like that. And uh, we need a cylinder that fits inside this, because that's kind of how the whole thing works. Come back here, you. Hit the W keys a little too soon. Yeah, it looks like that's going to work.
Okay, down with that. We'll convert that to an editable poly. If you really wanted to, you could step in here and remove that guy. Uh, let's just grab this guy, hold down control, and switch over to edges. Do a quick chamfer. Click OK. And uh, let's jump out here to elements. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. <clears throat> Choking on me, eh? A little bit. So uh, I think that'll work. So let's grab all this, hit M, and we'll assign our material. And there we go. Cool. Now what are we looking at in terms of time? Well, this is a, a good stopping point, to be honest with you. We're ten minutes over Ooh. our nightly allotted amount of time. <laughs> oh, well. Well, things are looking good, so I'm happy. Again, just before Zach wraps everything up, I'd like to remind everybody we have announced a new contest over at 3D Buzz, old school level design using Unreal Tournament 3. This is something that we're pushing because we'd like to kind of get things, well, the best we can anyways, back to the way it was. Or if nothing else, over the next month, I'd like to see some really cool levels that we can play around the office here. <laughs> some fantastic prizes. Yeah, so we're nice. willing to invest a lot of money for our own enjoyment. Mm-hmm. But uh, and, and we'll let everybody play all the levels as well, so this should be interesting. We'll be announcing official details here sometime this week, but in the meantime, like we said earlier, there's some really cool prizes that are up. Epic Games has come in behind us to, uh, to help make things even nicer. Uh, we've got $1,000 going out to our first place winner along with a PS3 or $500 if you'd like. So you could have $1,500 or $1,000 and a PS3. <laughs> and Cliff Blazinski, uh, the mastermind behind Unreal, Unreal Tournament. The design director the, the, of Epic Games. Design director of Epic Games, yeah. Mastermind, uh, I won't, don't want to say that. That'd be Tim Sweeney. <laughs> but you could say Cliff Blazinski's Tim's left hand. But uh, Cliff will be personally reviewing your level, the winner's level, that is, uh, in VTM format. So what an awesome way to receive a critique on your work. So if you're looking at getting into the industry, what a what a way to go. Oh, yeah, it's an absolutely huge opportunity. Yeah, it really is, just to get your work in front of someone. But uh, second and third place winners uh, will uh, each receive a PS3, brand new, or $500 if they opt to go the cash direction. And uh, let's see, what else? Oh, yeah. Signed copy of Unreal. Signed copy of Unreal Tournament 3. But that goes out to everyone, first, second, and third. Right. And Logan and Terry, huge Unreal fanatics since the very beginning, will be critiquing those levels as well. So that's pretty much everything. Again, you can find some details right now on 3D Buzz. Uh, all the details will be coming out here in the next few days. I'd like to thank you guys for joining Zach and I tonight as we go through, what is this, part 9 or 10? Part 10. Part 10. Mm-hmm. And we look forward to being back with you guys here in the next night or two. Thanks a lot.